Welcome to the Mary Lewis Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you for attending this evening. Before we get started, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that since this is a webinar, you'll be interacting with the panelists through the Q&A feature. So feel free to ask any questions you may have of any of the panelists at any time during the presentations using that Q&A button. Also, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. There are two other blocks of presentations this evening, so please feel free to sign up for them at the same link where you signed up for this session. And also about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, be Roger Williams University. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Colton Bright. I am one of the Associate Directors of Admission at Roger Williams. I'm going to go through some slides quickly for you. Uh, first off, one of the things we always love to highlight is the beautiful location where we are situated. Um, we are in Bristol, Rhode Island, right between Newport and Providence, um, and just an hour south of Boston. So some nice opportunities to explore throughout the Northeast. Um, especially if you have friends attending any colleges in the area. It's a nice opportunity to get to go around. And we do have a very close relationship with the town we're located in, with Bristol. Um, and we have a 24 seven shuttle that gives students easy access to get around the community. So a few things that I wanna focus on are schools and colleges. At Roger Williams, we're just over 4,000 undergraduate students. And then we also have our Division of University Studies located in downtown Providence and the only law school in the state of Rhode Island. In addition to that, we have several different graduate programs that are set up on an accelerated basis. So if you're interested in doing your master's in business administration, we have a four plus one pathway available for you. Um, architecture, we have a four plus one and a half year pathway for you. Construction management, four plus one pathway for you and any student doing a major in construction management is going to inherently graduate with a minor from our Gabelli School of Business. So that's the other thing that's important to understand is our curriculum is incredibly flexible and diverse in the way that we want to get you out and understanding all of the different interdisciplinary parallels in your work that can help you reach your personal and professional goals. So even though you'll be applying and looking to be admitted to one of our different schools that you see here, it's important to understand that it's not siloed in the way that it might be at a much larger institution. We're in that small to medium space. All of our students are going to be learning firsthand from uh, full-time faculty members. Our leaders in the classroom are going to be professors. Um, there are, they're going to be industry leaders in their field and they're going to be the ones that are mentoring and advising you as you start to explore your professional pathway and journey. Um, one of the things that's very unique about our academic experience is that interdisciplinary curriculum. So as you see here, over 80% of our students will do more than just a, a major. So if you're coming in undecided, or typically when students come in undecided, it may be that you're not ready to commit to one particular thing. Maybe you haven't had exposure to it, or maybe you like a lot of different things. Whatever the case may be, Roger Williams is flexible and situated to help you work through that to where you can do any different major and minor combinations. Um, I know many of our tour guides do a double major and a minor, a major and multiple minors, but the curriculum is set up as you see it here to help support you along the way, All right? And when it comes to hands-on learning, could spend a lot of time talking about any of these. When it comes to student faculty research and internships, our philosophy is early and often. Community Partnership Center is a great example. That's basically how we serve Greater Rhode Island and Southeastern Massachusetts, available to all majors, getting you out into the community, doing work that builds your professional portfolio of experiences. Um, so that can happen through volunteering, internships, grad assistantships, work study positions, a lot of variety available to you. Study abroad, only about 10% of college graduates nationally study abroad. At Roger Williams, it's nearly half of our students. So we do really do have a lot of um, ease of access for students in that. When it comes to our admissions information, we are test optional for admissions. We have been for a long time, test optional for all majors, 
for all scholarships and even for our honors program. So we love to do a holistic review. And one thing that's very new for us this year is we even added the opportunity for students to interview. So we want to get to know you. We want to get to know your strengths and your experiences. So if you're not able to test or if you know that's not the best indication of your abilities, we can set up an interview with one of our admission staff or one of our alumni interviewers. And I would encourage all of you, if you're attending this today, get your application in by early action. That'll ensure that you're getting your admission decision and scholarship information uh, by the winter holiday. And our merit scholarships range from $10,000 to $23,000 per year if you're admitted. And then on top of that, we've got some incredible other financial aid and opportunities to support our students to make the cost of attendance affordable for students and families. Many colleges and universities in the Northeast are climbing upward of 60 and $70,000 per year. At Roger Williams, we're right around 54, $55,000 with many uh, different aid opportunities to support our students. So that's a quick glimpse into life at Roger Williams. Uh, please save some questions for me. I would love to help talk, uh, talk more about the opportunities. Thanks. Thank you, Roger Williams. Uh, up next this evening will be Salve Regina University. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Good evening, Mary Lewis Academy. My name is Stephanie Dupuy, and I'm an Associate Dean of Undergraduate Admissions at Salve Regina, and I'm also a proud alumna of the class of 2004. Um, I really wish I was able to be there to visit with you all tonight on campus, but I do look forward to connecting with you as I work with all students applying to Salve Regina from New York City. We always start talking about Salve with where we began and our founding by the Sisters of Mercy. The Sisters of Mercy um, are an order of nuns that were founded in Dublin, Ireland, and they became known as the walking nuns because they didn't live a cloistered life. They were social workers, they were teachers, they were educators, and they worked with communities that needed them most in the city of Dublin. And when they started Salve Regina University 75, just about 75 years ago, um, they opened their doors to young women looking to pursue careers in helping professions, nursing, education, social work. So many people know us for these areas. The Sisters of Mercy focus a lot of their work on service and social justice, and this is something that you'll find as a student at Salve. Salve's grown and changed a lot since we were founded. We have 2,100 undergraduate students. We're right down the road from Roger Williams, <laughs> about 20, 25 minutes. So if you're visiting them, come and see us. 85% of our students hail from outside of the state of Rhode Island. Um, the most popular states that our students come from are Connecticut and Massachusetts, New York and New Jersey, but we recruit throughout the country and the world. Um, and our students are representative of 41 states and 21 nations. The photo on the right is a picture of our campus. We're situated in a historic setting in Newport, Rhode Island, in Gilded Age mansions, stables, and carriage houses overlooking the cliffs of the Atlantic Ocean. And I would encourage you if you're going to visit campus, we are doing tours right now. If you visit campus, take the time to take a walk on the cliff walk, tour a mansion, go downtown, have a cup of chowder at a restaurant, open air on the wharf. Um, the Newport community is important to the university and our students do a lot of work through service and internships. Newport really is a, an extension of our greater community at Salve. One of the things I liked best about Salve was its size. Average class sizes are 30 students. Um, and we have a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio. You'll never be in a class of more than 35 students. Um, some of the largest majors are education, nursing, business, psychology, biology, and the biomedical sciences. And many of our students double major and pick up minors. 
when students apply to Salve, um, the most popular major is undeclared or exploratory, and we embrace that. As a liberal arts university, you will explore through a full liberal arts core curriculum, but there's flexibility in that curriculum. So if you know what you want to study, you can start taking courses in your intended major or majors um, when you arrive at the university and spread classes through the liberal arts core throughout your time um, throughout the rest of the four years. Some additional minors and pre-professional programs. We have quite a few accelerated um, five-year master's degree programs that many students take advantage of. Explore, ex exploration and hands-on learning is such an important part of what we do. Our students are out in the community. The students on the right are part of our cultural and historic preservation program doing an archeological dig in town. We have a lot of students involved in the performing arts and many are doing hands-on research with faculty members in our labs throughout the school year and summer. I'd encourage you to get involved um, in many ways and take advantage of the many hands-on opportunities that you'll have in the classroom, outside of the classroom, through internships and study abroad and service learning. Um, students really put to use what they're learning in the classroom when they do this and come out with a set of skills that prepares them for the world of work once they graduate. Involvement is so important on campus. You're gonna have so much time that you have to creatively spend outside of the classroom. We have over 80 clubs and organizations and we have 20 division three varsity athletics programs. And our students have a lot of cultural and recreational opportunities both on campus and in the city of Newport. Some additional photos of some of our um, sports, sailing, rugby students in um, one of our multicultural week celebrations and involved in a beach cleanup. Um, so make sure my one of my best recommendations to all of you is to get involved and actively be a member on whichever campus you find yourself on in, in the year ahead. Salve um, has a couple options for applying. We utilize the common application. We have a November 1st deadline for early action and early decision. We've added an early action two deadline just this year and also regular decision February 1st. As I mentioned, we are a common app school and we are test optional. We've been test optional for quite a long time. Your academic record is the most important piece to your application. We like to see what you've done day to day throughout high school and your letters of recommendation share a lot more about you, about your work ethic and what it is that you do outside of the classroom. Um, our merit scholarships are reviewed for and awarded upon acceptance and go up to $25,000 a year. We have a variety of other scholarships as well and only require the FAFSA for need-based financial aid. As I mentioned, we are doing in-person tours. We also have virtual opportunities, information sessions and tours, a virtual open house. And as I work with the students from Mary Lewis, um, I'm happy to set up an interview or a meeting with any of you. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. I look forward to your questions and connecting with you as you begin your college search. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Salve. Uh, up next this evening is Hampshire College. Greetings all, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> My name is Bernadette Burke and I am Associate Director of Admissions at Hampshire. I um, really came to Hampshire because of Hampshire's model being a little bit different than most schools. We ask students to really take ownership of their education. So from the very beginning, we have very few requirements of your classes. <clears throat> and we ask you to put together your areas of study. And I say that in plural because almost every one of our students in, takes on more than one area of learning. Often there are um, two or three that they are doing. Um, sorry, my machine is not moving forward here. Give me one second. There it goes. Um, Hampshire is, uh, has been test blind for six years. We decided a long time ago to um, not have you be a number, which is why we give narrative evaluations and not grades. And about six years ago, we went that route with being test blind as well. And we're really happy to see the number of schools that have become test optional or test blind this year and hoping to create more equity for students. Um, we have removed the barriers between students. So with the narrative evaluations, rather than setting up competition, why did you get an A, why did you get a B? All of our students get narrative evaluations. 
And um, <clears throat> additionally, we have created more opportunities for students to collaborate across the board, meaning that we have broken down the barriers between all of the schools. We have um, created four different learning collaboratives. Um, let me just uh, help myself here for a minute. Um, we have created four different um, learning collaboratives in which you will be working if you come to Hampshire. And um, what we do, wow, sorry, my machine is really giving me a hard time here today. Uh, not, not computer day. Um, our, our learning collaboratives are about breaking down those barriers, as I said. We have no majors, we don't have departments. You really put together your areas of learning. We do obviously have groupings, um, everything from mathematics to sciences, uh, linguistics, anything else. But we really want you to put together the ways in which you will be looking at real world problems. Um, in our learning collaboratives, what we've done is we've created these four areas where most of our classes actually fall under these um, four headings. And the four headings are really designed to be addressing real world problems right now. We have classes that are being taught by multiple professors. Um, in our first year seminar last semester, we had a pandemics course that was being taught by a professor in the sciences, a professor in economics, and somebody within the humanities for cultural anthropology. And the point is really about looking at your learning from multiple different perspectives, and the way that you will actually solve your problems is never in isolation in real world. We want you to start practicing that immediately when you come to Hampshire. The idea, as I said, is about collaboration, really engaging among students and faculty. You are going to be choosing only two seminars in your first year, and then the rest, I mean, um, those are the required ones. And then after that, you get to choose all of your own classes. And we want you to take a really broad range of classes. So throughout your um, four years at Hampshire, we've actually broken it into a divisional system so that in your first year is really your year to explore. Your um, second and third years are division two. That is where you are diving deep. Other places might call it declaring your major. We want you to um, <clears throat> really dive into the type of learning activities that are meaningful to you. So it can be classes at Hampshire. It can be classes at the five college um, consortium. It can be internships, research opportunities, study abroad, more than a third of our students do study abroad. Um, we have one of the longest running programs in Havana, Cuba, and we do a two semester program with that. Um, first semester is on campus, second semester is a, in Cuba. <clears throat> Obviously this year it was remote, but actually they uh, created some really rich programming for students. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, allergy day for me. Um, in addition, we are test blind, as I mentioned earlier, and so we really want to um, have you approach your opportunities in a way that will allow you to um, have largest access to uh, Hampshire. <clears throat> we are looking at all aspects of your um, application without actually asking for any of your SAT scores, ATC scores. That is not actually who you are. And we have a holistic way of reading your application and we've been doing this a long time. We're really confident in that way. Um, Hampshire is actually just recently ranked number eight in the US among small colleges. For anybody associated with the college, that is actually a basically we use the phrase change maker, but somebody who's an influential aspect of whatever their field is, whether it's our professors, our alumni, our current students. And um, of the four colleges that are part, the four private colleges that are part of the five college consortium, um, all four of us have ranked in the top 22 of um, schools that are influential in, in areas in which their professors or alumni are participating. Um, we are number eight, Amherst College is number two, UMass, I'm sorry, uh, Amherst College is number two, Mount Holyoke is number 
17 or 22 and Smith is 17 or 22. I'm forgetting actually which one. I mean, it just came out very recently. So um, just last thing to say, we are, a, we have more trees than people in New York. I'm a New York person myself, but we would love you to come and join us on our very sustainable campus. We actually have two living buildings um, and the only other place in the world where there are two living buildings in the same area is Seattle. And we have about one one hundredth of their population. So I hope to see you on campus soon enough. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Hampshire College. Uh, our next presenter this evening uh, will be Clark University. Hey, hello everybody. My name is Christopher Munoz Colleen. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions for Access and Inclusion here at Clark. And uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction to Clark. Uh, so we were founded in 1887 as one of the first research universities in the country. Uh, Clark is really kind of embraced research alongside a commitment to the liberal arts. Uh, there's actually a phrase that embodies Clark's approach, uh, which is liberal education and effective practice. So throughout your time at Clark, you will engage in our liberal arts curriculum, um, but you'll also be doing something called effective practice. And the best example that I can give is if you wanted to learn how to swim, uh, it would be really not helpful just to watch people swim or to read about swimming. <laughs> you would eventually want to swim yourself as a mode of learning. Uh, so a clerk that could be curating an exhibit, working with a local nonprofit, uh, writing a play. Uh, so that's what effective practice means. But I do want to touch on community. Uh, Clark's community is a, uh, really collaborative and engaged. We're around 2,200 undergraduate students. Um, we don't have any fraternities or sororities, and instead, our students are really engaging in our 130 clubs, uh, 17 Division III sports, and really the Worcester community is uh, central to Clark. Um, but before we go into that, we'll start with academics. So everyone at Clark will take a course called the First Year Intensive. Uh, the FYI can really range in subject matter, so you can see some examples on the screen. Um, the real benefit of all of these courses is that they're designed to teach students how to be ready for college level work. Uh, so things like uh, essay writing or organizing study groups or maybe participating in a discussion based class. Um, the idea is that you can learn these skills in an environment of support. So the professor in the FYI is, I think, geniusly also your first advisor at Clark. So you're seeing your advisor regularly in that uh, first semester. Um, so you really get started with a strong foundation. So as I said, Clark has a liberal arts curriculum. Uh, we call it the program of liberal studies. So every student will engage in this curriculum, uh, but there's quite a bit of freedom. So we do guide you in your curricular choices, but you pick how that specifically will look. Um, so let's take an example, uh, the aesthetic perspective. So you could do what the students are doing on the screen, which is a photography course. Uh, or you could do something like the history of jazz, completely different discipline. <laughs> you will not be making any art in that course, um, but it still guides you to explore the arts. And what we're hoping for is that you'll have a real flexibility of your perspective. Um, we want you to graduate from Clark, being able to give a TED talk if you need to, uh, to present your research to various audiences. Uh, so we hope this curriculum will train you in that. And as I said, uh, that effective practice example, of the swimming lessons. This is the swimming lessons, our, our problems of practice courses. Um, so you'll notice that acronym POP. That's actually in the course catalog. It'll be right next to a class. And you know that it's one of these classes, um, which are specifically designed to take you out of the classroom and practice what you're learning, like as a mode of learning itself. Um, so we do have examples listed. The main thing I want to emphasize is that they completely range across the disciplines. As I said earlier, our students curate exhibits in the Worcester Art Museum. Uh, they partner with businesses in Boston. They do field work abroad. They teach in local classrooms. This is really, um, regardless of your discipline, a mode, a central mode of learning at Clark. And um, students should really finish their undergraduate years at Clark having taken ownership over their education and the capstone is just how we do that. So I, I, again, you can see the examples are quite broad here. It could be a course, an internship, a thesis, a research project. 
um, the main takeaway is just this is a larger project really of your choosing um, and it's meant for you to take ownership over what you've learned. We hope that all of these experiences will prepare you for life after Clark. Um, on this slide, I think it's just fascinating how these numbers speak to each other that um, truly the number on the left of how many of our students will take an internship before senior year, you know, it's hard to kind of conceptualize, but I just say um, it's just incredibly statistically likely that if you were to come to Clark, you would uh, do an internship and in fact you would do it in your first three years. Uh, and I and you'll see on the right that our students do very well in terms of graduate school placement, um, finding jobs after Clark. I can't uh, not mention that a third of our students stay at Clark uh, and they do that uh, for one year and they get an accelerated master's degree and they pay zero tuition during that year. Um, so again, this is an incredibly popular option at Clark. I understand that all of you are, you know, in high school still, so you're probably not yet thinking about your master's degree. I just uh, encourage you to leave it on the back burner as an option. I will wrap up um, just with a quick note on admissions. Uh, Clark is also test optional, um, and we have been for nearly a decade. Um, and all of the uh, the dates and everything on this page, we will remind you over email. I just want to encourage you to feel free to keep in touch along the way. Um, I'm your admissions counselor here at Clark, uh, and there's no bad or wrong question. You are always welcome to write. And with that, I will uh, pass it along to my colleagues. Thank you very much, Clark. And just a reminder to all of our attendees, you're welcome to ask any questions you may have of any of our panelists using the Q&A button. But up next this evening is Sacred Heart University. Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Ford and I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Sacred Heart University. I'm just gonna go through this quick PowerPoint presentation for you. So we have five colleges of study under the Sacred Heart University umbrella. We first have the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Communications, Media and the Arts, the Isabel Farrington College of Education, the Jack Welsh College of Business and Technology, which is home to our School of Computer Science and Engineering, and also our College of Health Professions, which has DPT, OT, AT, EX and also communications disorders accelerator programs here. And we also have the Davis and Henley College of Nursing. So getting involved is something that's super important at Sacred Heart. We have 60 plus clubs and organizations as well as a growing Greek life organization. The Greek life organizations here at Sacred Heart are actually founded in philanthropic organizations. So each Greek life, um, Greek, Greek life club will be paired with a philanthropic organization where you can fund and help fundraise uh, um, funds for a said organization. We have student government and student leadership organizations, as well as being part of the NCAA Division I NEC conference. So if you're looking to be part of a D1 team, you can at Sacred Heart. But if you're not looking to be as something that's super committed, we do have um, 35 club sports and intramurals for you to choose from. As well as getting, as well as our sports, we do have performing arts on on campus. So we do have a growing performing arts department with theater arts, dance, choir, band, and orchestra, as well as color guard. And if there are grant opportunities here as well, so if you're looking to participate, you can actually get money off of your tuition. And we also have volunteer programs and community service. We've actually ranked in over 100,000 hours of community service within the past five years on a local, national, and global scale. And there are also grant opportunities within this department. We have a great study abroad program. So we have two um, campuses, one in Luxembourg and the other one in Dingle, Ireland. And then we have 60 other programs in 30 different countries around the world. So no matter where you're looking to study, you, we can do it at Sacred Heart. We, as part of a Jesuit college, uh, we do have a growing campus ministry with great initiatives that are under the Catholic um, intellectual tradition, as well as multicultural affairs. We actually just recently opened up a center for multicultural affairs on our main academic campus. And the director of that center is actually an old um, admissions counselor. So it's always nice to have one of our own over there. Going back. 
So here's some national endorsements. I'm not going to go over all of them, but we're definitely being recognized for um, having uh, the 10 most happiest students, as well as our community service, as I mentioned earlier. And we also are uh, listed as one of the top 10 fastest growing Catholic colleges in the, in the United States. And that's because we've um, built 14 buildings in the last 15 years. So all the buildings that you're going to see around our campus are going to be new and they're going to be with open within the past 14 years. So here are some of the um, placements that students have graduated and been actually been enrolled in. So as you can see, we have partnerships with the top four accounting firms, as well as WWE, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Google, and Vineyard Vines. And all these um, all these companies also partner in not just post-grad opportunities, but also during your undergrad, if you're looking to do internships, we have a great um, career and professional development department that will actually help you figure out exactly where you wanna go. So for my undecided students, if you don't know, that's perfectly fine. We have a program tailored just for you. So this is the Center for Healthcare Education. This was newly um, built and open, I wanna say two years ago now, and it's a state-of-the-art facility with simulation labs, cadaver labs, as well as um, dummies that will replicate real diseases that you would see in the field. And they also give birth once a week, which is pretty cool. This is our West Campus. This was acquired from General Electric. This was their old headquarters before they moved up to Boston, I wanna say two years ago. And it's home to our AI lab, our hotel management and hospitality, as well as our education schools and our engineering school. We do have a um, idea lab that has uh, over a dozen drones and 3D printers where students, no matter your course, um, no matter your course of program, you'll be able to go down there and create real life things. This is JP's Diner. It's named after our uh, president, Dr. John Patillo, who's known for his bow ties. It's a 50 style diner with all home style cooking that is in fact part of your meal plan. So you'll be able to go there. They make an amazing turkey club that I get all the time, um, but they have milkshakes galore, uh, pancakes, French toast, whatever you need. So this is the upper quad. As you can see, some of the photos are a little bit more lifelike than the others, and that's because it's about halfway done. It's set to be completely finished in fall 2021, and when it is finished, it'll be home for all four years, as well as a full fitness facility and a dining hall. Right now, freshmen and sophomores are currently living there. This is the Bobby Valentine Health and Recreation Center, and Bobby Valentine was previously the manager for the New York Mets, but he's actually our athletic director now, and he built this amazing facility for our non-Division I student athletes. It has a 30-foot rock wall, a 12-lane bowling alley, a golf simulator, as well as aerobics rooms, and an elevated track. So when you're looking to apply to Sacred Heart, we ask that you apply via the Common App, and here are some important deadlines to keep in mind. If you're looking to apply early decision, which is a binding contract, that, that um, deadline is December 1st, whereas early action one is non-binding as well as early action two. I do want to point out that early action one is our priority deadline for our nursing students. Here are some application requirements I'm going to go over really quickly. We do require official high school transcript and one letter of recommendation. You can submit one more as long as it's from a non-relative. And we do accept in interviews as long, um, as long as you're not um, doing early decision. They are required. But, you know, it's nice to be able to put an application face to, um, to set application. We have been test optional for the past 14 years, so you do not have to submit them. And the average nursing, uh, the average GPA for a non-nursing student is a 3.4 with a nursing student being a 3.7. And this is just some other deadlines for our financial aid. We do ask that you fill out the CSS profile because as a private Catholic institution, it's aid that we can give you in addition to your FAFSA. So be sure to fill that out. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Great, thank you very much, Sacred Heart. And moving on to our final presenter for the evening, we have the University of New Haven. Hi everyone, I hope you're able to hear me. Um, 
My name is Tanika Mills, and I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of New Haven, and my territory is New York City. Um, I'll be your point of contact. I'll send all my stuff towards the end. Um, but here we go. So this is the University of New Haven. Oh, brother. Sorry, I'm not that tech savvy sometimes. We're located in West Haven, Connecticut, which is a small town, which is Next to um, New Haven, if any, anyone's familiar with Yale New Haven, which is downtown New Haven, we're only about five miles away from that school. Um, we're two hours away from New York City and just about the same amount of hours from Boston. Um, West Haven is very residential. There are a lot of trees around us. Um, it's not like a city like, and we are the only school located in West Haven, but we are surrounded by six other um, colleges and universities in this area. We have 5,000. I mean, I think. I'm sorry. Oh, we have 5,000 undergrads, so we're not that big or not too small. Um, everything is very personable here at the University of New Haven. Our class sizes are 22, so you'll never be in a huge lecture hall where it's like 200 students or anything like that. Um, a lot of the students get to know their professors and vice versa, so your teacher will know who you are the first day you walk into class. We have over 100 plus different um, majors. So for students to choose from, there's like anything that they can do. It's split up into five different colleges. These are the five different colleges that we have here on our campus. Um, there's College of Arts and Sciences, College of Health Sciences, the Pompeii College of Business, the Tagatelia College of Engineering, and Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences. Um, we, were, we are well known for Henry Lee um, Henry Lee C to be on our campus. He has retired, but he does come um, once in a while um, to do some lectures or do like, you know, small little programs for the students, but he is there and he does have a um, museum on our campus. 97% per of our students who do graduate, um, they do, they are placed into their job after at least a year. So that's very unique um, with us. We are, considering that we are a small school, um, you know, it's it's great. We have our students do a lot of experiential learning and this is how they get it is from being partnered with their professors. At least 90% of our professors do hold a PhD. So you're just, you're being taught by someone in the industry who knows what they're doing. We have over 200 plus clubs and organization. So we do have a saying board is not an option here at the University of New Haven. Um, there's no excuse. There's, you can be involved in anything and everything here. It's just a little overview of what we have. You see cheerleading, there's dance team, there's theater, the marching band. Um, we have Greek life. So we have a little bit of a, a lot of things. Um, we have a study abroad option. We do have a remote campus in Prado, Italy. Um, a lot of our first year students get to go there. Um, it really depends, um, you know, due to COVID, there's a lot of different things going on, but you know, students do, Hopefully students will get the opportunity to study abroad eventually again. Um, but this is, this is um, that yellow building is where the students get to do their academics and they get to um, sleep in that building. They get to do many different excursions and stuff like that. Um, we do have a mock crime scene. So a lot of our students interested in criminal justice and forensic sciences do get to go down there to do the mock crime, crime scene. Um, we are division two in athletics. So this, these are some of the sports teams that we do have here on the, at the university. Um, our students who are interested in athletics, they can fill out a prospective student um, athlete form with us. Our scholarships, are, we do have two different kinds of scholarships. Our academic scholarships are given upon um, acceptance. They're ranging from 10,000 to 26,000, depending on students' GPA or if they do submit their test scores, but we are test optional. Um, our additional scholarships, we do give out honor scholarships to students who are invited into the honors program, our marching band scholarship for students who do play instruments, preferably for the marching band. Our, Pompe our Pompeii scholarship is for students who are applying into the College of Business and portfolio scholarship are for students who are um, who have a portfolio in graphic design, um, anything within the arts, like art studio, anything like that. 
We do have some on-campus and virtual vision opportunities, so and I will add that link in. Um, there's a drive-through campus. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions with an admissions counselor. Um, we have virtual information sessions and a tour that students can go on. Um, we, we're now hosting financial aid nights, and um, we have accepted student events. So when you get the chance, if you ever want to go, you can register at newhaven.edu slash visit, and I'll also add that in the chat. If you do have any questions, but you guys have a great night. Hey, thank you very much, New Haven. Uh, we do have about five minutes left. So while we wait to see if any additional questions come in through the Q&A, if I could ask the, all the panelists to turn their videos back on. We'll go around really quick um, and maybe have you answer one of the following two questions. Either what's one piece of advice you have for a student going through the college search process in this unusual time uh, or general advice you may have. Um, or um, six minutes is short. What's one thing you did not have time to say in your presentation that you'd like to quickly cover with the group? So when we start, uh, go in the same order. So start with uh, Roger Williams. Great, thanks. Um, so yeah, as you get started in the college search process, I would just say to keep an eye on your email um, and work with your counseling office because it's incredibly, incredibly important as you get started in your search to know what's available to you. Um, and one of the kind of silver linings of everything that has happened regarding COVID um, is the fact that colleges has shifted a lot of their opportunities to connect to Zoom. Um, so there's going to be a lot of different virtual open houses, virtual tours, virtual opportunities to connect with the professors that are going to be leading you in the classes, uh, the peers that are going to be your friends and mentors across campus, the coaches, I mean, whoever it is, take advantage of those different opportunities to really get to know the people. Um, because even though it may not feel like you're able to get to campus, you can still have a really good pulse on what's going on. And I think the other thing I would say is um, ask questions about this year. I think how colleges have handled the response to COVID says a lot about what you can expect um, in your undergraduate experience and understanding how thoughtful the institution is for the needs of the students, of parents, of community members, everything like that. So I would just say, keep advantage of the, take advantage of those opportunities. And um, specifically one of the special presentations that I offer um, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. And you can search Roger Williams special presentations. I lead a session around navigating the college search. And that is Roger Williams themed, of course, but um, it's really meant to be more broad based advice for how we can help you build your list of colleges, find the right mix of schools that ultimately is gonna end up leading uh, to a successful search and helping you find that future home away from home. So I would say just keep an eye on opportunities and um, use your admission counselors as a resource, myself or any of the other great individuals here tonight. Great, thank you. Uh, Salve? Absolutely. Um, great advice, Colton. I would absolutely agree with many of the things that you said. If you're still able to visit campuses, I do think that it is still wonderful to be able to get on campus. Um, Rhode Island is welcoming New Yorkers to the state and we're still providing those opportunities. But as Colton had mentioned, um, there are so many virtual opportunities. Salve has created a Thursday night workshop series and um, regarding things um, that you can do to connect uh, with us to help better your future application. So college essay writing workshops, financial aid workshops, common application workshops. Um, so do stay connected to us. We are here to help. We want to learn about you. Um, we want to connect you with people's on, people on campus and our students and faculty really want to connect with you as well. So um, don't hesitate to reach out, ask questions and follow your heart. Great, thank you. A Hampshire? I would say, um, as everybody else has said, just keep looking at a lot of schools. Hampshire has both virtual opportunities. We have a drive-through campus. Because we are in an area with four other schools within 15 minutes of us, I encourage you to look at all of them if you do come to the area. We're only about three hours north of New York City, 
two hours west of Boston. Um, a lot of opportunities to visit schools between us and there. All of these schools are within that driving distance mostly. So it is well worth visiting as many as you can once things really open up. And um, we have a lot online that you're welcome to join us for, uh, financial aid workshops and meeting with students, meeting with alum, and a lot of uh, 50th anniversary events because Hampshire turned 50 this year. So since we're not doing as much in person, lots online to uh, participate in if you'd like to join us. Great, thank you. Clark? I will just um, echo the advice that I gave in the panel and just really briefly say, uh, remember that none of us are born knowing how the American college admissions process works. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions or think that we're judging your questions. Um, we are absolutely not. There's no right or wrong, good or bad kind of question to be asking. And I think all of us would agree that um, we're just happy to help along the way. Great, thank you. Sacred Heart? I guess the best advice that I can give is to start early from looking about my Looking back to my own college experience, I started early and that gave me a lot of room to really dig deep into the colleges that I was looking at. If you have time to look at these colleges, let's say, you know, the pandemic lasts a lot longer than we think it's going to, you have that time and that flexibility to not have to rush and get an application in or, you know, rush to find out financial aid information. As long as you start early and you use the resources that are provided to you, I think everything will kind of fall into place. Great, thank you. And New Haven. Um, I can agree with everybody that they said some really good, um, you know, ideas and pointers. Um, I tell all my students the sky's the limit because literally with this pandemic, I don't want it to feel like it's hindering them and making them feel like they're behind on anything else. Don't worry, you're not the only one behind. I'm also in school myself, so it does get a little um, like crazy trying to balance things, but um, just you know, keep pushing forth and try your best. Always put your best put your best foot forward. Um, don't you know? Just if you're not able to visit, like everyone said, try to be involved as much as you can virtually. It does get a little funny. It acts weird. It all these things happen virtual events, but just go ahead and just do it. Um, and don't ever be afraid to contact any, um, you know, your admissions counselor or any, anybody about anything, because we're here to help you at the end of the day. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to all of our panelists this evening and to all of our attendees who joined us. As we wrap up this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, when you close this session, you'll get a four, quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. Also, again, please feel free to sign up for more sessions this evening. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you to everybody. Have a great night and good luck in your college search. Thanks very much for having us. Thank you.